I think this is a very interesting uh, event, uh, but I think we have to be careful uh, in terms of how we uh, look at uh, all the different things that end up, you know, uh, influencing whatever happened now uh, before we can actually, you know, uh, infer, you know, anything in terms of a, a, a cure, you know, a potential cure for HIV. Uh, first of all, I mean, we have, you know, a woman who, uh, for whatever reason, uh, did not receive any prenatal care. We know that prenatal care nowadays, uh, properly done in women who are HIV infected, can actually significantly, you know, reduce the transmission of HIV to the offspring. Uh, she presented and uh, lucky enough, uh, the providers uh, where uh, Dr. Hannah Gay uh, and her team were able to um, assess the risk of HIV acquisition for that baby to be high enough that she decided to treat the baby with a potent regimen that we typically use for children or adults who are infected with HIV. Uh, that treatment uh, successfully uh, was effective as demonstrated by the fact that within one month uh, the viral load of the baby was uh, totally suppressed and it continued to suppress uh, for 12 to 15 months uh, following. Uh, when the baby was lost to follow up, that's the second breakthrough. Typically, a uh, breakdown. Typically, we don't see, you know, uh, children who are known to be HIV infected who suddenly, you know, uh, the treatment gets interrupted. As uh, we know that HIV progresses much faster in children than it does in adults, and uh, by interrupting uh, the treatment, very often we can put them, you know, a significant risk of having, you know, a regression of their uh, immune system. So, I think there are factors uh, that we have to evaluate carefully. One, it has to do with the timing of the infection and the timing of initiation therapy. There are factors that have to do with the virus itself that we have to understand better. Perhaps, I mean, these children may have a virus that genetically was a little bit different, you know, than the virus that we normally deal with. And third, I mean, there may be inherent in factors in the baby's immune system that may somehow, you know, uh, work a little bit better than we normally see. Uh, again, this is an amazing, you know, uh, almost if you will, I mean, natural experiment that we can actually see events and uh, have a little window to see, you know, events that we normally would have never had a chance to, to look at that help us to um, develop a little bit of insight uh, on this and uh, with that uh, in the future we hope with a better understanding uh, to be able to at least better uh, develop better ways to treat HIV. I think again it's, it kind of gives us a very a little different perspective in uh, how HIV, um, how early treatment may affect, you know, may interact with the immune system in terms of uh, providing uh, the immune system a better way to control the infection um, in a way that we uh, can replicate, you know, easily. All right. And um, what, what are your thoughts about the long-term potential, uh, the long-term potential impact? I mean, I think that in terms of the long term, they're, they're yet to be seen. I mean, again, I think we have to uh, we have to look at this case uh, very carefully, and we have to again understand each step of the process. I mean, as I say, uh, the moment at which the baby we presume the baby got the infection, and what was the relationship from that moment that the baby received the first doses of uh, HIV uh, treatment, uh, and uh, so how timing of doses versus infection may affect, you know, the way the immune system interacts with the virus itself. So we have to look, again, uh, as I said before, into the uh, microbiologic factors, I mean, the, the virus itself, I mean, what's the genetic composition with the virus and how is it different from the typical virus that we see. Uh, we have to look at the, the genetic, you know, uh, makeup of that little girl's, you know, immune system and, uh, and, and see how all those three things, you know, interacted and how to be able to understand uh, how these things may affect, uh, could be used to, to change how we do things. Uh, one, the only thing that I can think about that could certainly, you know, uh, uh, produce some kind of a meaningful short-term and medium-term impact is uh, uh, in places where you have a significant proportion of uh, women who may reach delivery with no prenatal care, you may think that, um, that this experience, you know, may uh, allow providers to kind of uh, be a little bit more aggressive in initiation therapy for children in where they may suspect HIV infection um, while confirmation of the HIV infection uh, may be pending. And, uh, and certainly, uh, while we don't know if the results that we have seen here can be replicated, I think that uh, based on these results, I mean, I think it's a valid uh, alternative and, uh, and time will tell.